Hi, everyone. Welcome to the information session for the Senior Leaders Program for Nonprofit Professionals. I'm Lon To, the Associate Director for the Programs for Social Enterprise at Columbia's Executive Education Division. And I'm Karen Bridges, Manager of Programs in Social Enterprise. All right, so this is what we're going to cover today. We're going to help you answer the question, is SLP the right program for you? I will discuss a little bit about what the schedule is like, uh, what the content will be like, including um, what's going to be taught, assignments, um, the potential outcomes. And then Karen and I are, are going to walk you through the admissions process, um, as well as the tuition and aid. We'll end with a Q&A, so get your questions ready and be sure you submit them as we go. And rest assured, um, we know that this is going to be a lot of information, so this session will be recorded and you will, re will receive a link to it so you can refer to the information later um, if you need to. So is SLP the right program for you? There are two things to consider. One is your role and the other is what we offer in our program. So when you're considering your role, think about are you responsible for the mission and strategy of the organization? And are you a member of the organization's senior leadership team? These first two questions are specifically about what you do at your organization and what role you have to influence or drive change. If you feel your role impacts the direction of the organization, its staff, and its future, then you will be with others in the program who have a similar role. Having this common sense of purpose and efficacy among your cohort is gonna help you in experiencing the design of the program. Something important to note is that we aren't fixed on titles. Uh, we really focus on roles. And you'll notice that uh, our past participants represent a number of strategic roles in their organizations. Majority are executive directors, but we also have chief operating officers, financial officers, senior directors, program directors, and, and associates. The key thing to think about and keep in mind about your role is that you should have, it, you should have a seat at the table when strategic conversations are occurring about the current and future state of your organization. If you're not sure if your role fits in, just email me and we can find a time to walk through it together. If you do not think that your role um, fits this degree of organizational responsibility, you might wanna consider our Developing Leaders Program, which is the sister version of this program, except that it's one week long rather than four weeks long. Um, the Developing Leaders Program is geared towards middle managers and emerging leaders in nonprofit organizations. And some individuals who would qualify for the Senior Leaders Program have chosen to complete the Developing Leaders Program um, instead due to the time commitment. The other two questions I want you to consider in con thinking about your role is, does SLP meet your needs both personally, professionally, and organizationally? And do you have the capacity to dedicate to the program? This is really about your ability to complete the program requirements and manage the schedule. Is this the right time for you to incorporate a course of study into your life personally and professionally? Will your organization support your time away from your responsibilities in order to complete and focus on the program? SLP is a major time commitment and financial investment for everyone who comes through the program and everyone who's supporting you to come through the program. You want to ask yourself if you're willing and able to commit to one full week a month for four months to come to the, to come to the university, be detached from your emails, phone meetings, conference calls, and be fully present as a student again. Will you be ready to sit in your seat and ready to go and fully participatory each day of each week of the program, which is roughly from 8.30 to 5? Um, the other thing to consider is that besides being fully committed as a participant during the weeks you are expected to be on campus, you also need to be able to prepare and complete assignments in between those weeks. There's a fair amount of pre-work that's assigned. Um, this is a graduate level program in terms of reading and, and assignments. And so they're going to take some time outside of your regular campus modules for you to complete and be fully prepared for sessions. That being said, let's um, look a little bit more closely at that piece of the equation, our program content and design. So I'll speak to four areas of the program, the format, the content, the assignments, and the outcomes. What will the schedule be like? What will be taught? What assignments are you responsible for? And is the investment of your time and energy as well 
as that of your supporters and family be worth it? So what is the schedule going to be like? Like I said, it's going to be four weeks spread over four months. It will commence in January and end in April. Uh, the beauty of this modular design is that you have the benefit of integrating and applying what you learn in one week between weeks and then coming back the next week to discuss it with your peers as well as the faculty regarding your, sex, your successes and challenges in integrating what you learned. Um, the modular component and design of this program is also why the majority of the participants are from New York City. Uh, we do, however, have individuals from other states as well as other countries who have been able to, to make the time commitment each month in New York. Uh, for our out-of-town applicants, you will want to know that travel and lodging is on your own. Uh, we do provide breakfast and lunch during the program week, which brings me to the daily schedule. So breakfast is from eight to nine every day. We have two sessions, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. We provide lunch from 12 to one usually. Um, and we end by 4.30. There are times in the week that we have a reception at the end of the day. Those usually end by 6.30. And the cohort becomes pretty close and they often have their own social gatherings that they um, plan and organize about one to two times a week after the end of the session. So that's something to, to know in terms of the schedule. We end every Friday by one. And that's mostly to accommodate our out of town travelers, but a number of participants have also used that time to stay on campus and catch up on assignments or read their emails, uh, make phone calls, and you are welcome to use the business school facilities uh, in order to, uh, to do that. So what is going to be taught? Here's a sample of a list of the sessions um, that is part of the SLP program. What you're going to learn is, is based on the Columbia MBA curriculum. Uh, these are the areas that we think will build out a management and leadership curriculum um, and program that is going to be robust and relevant for you. The faculty um, who teach these concepts will be drawn primarily from the management division of the business school, as well as other university colleges and schools, including psychology, and the School of International and Public Affairs, or SIPA. We've also invited a handful of practitioners with years of expertise in both their field as well as their teaching met methodologies. In addition to the faculty, we place a very strong emphasis on peer learning. Uh, we are fully aware that even though we have some world-renowned experts and faculty in their fields, there's still a tremendous amount of expertise in the room in the SLP cohort. These are individuals, and you are one of them, uh, if, if you're listening to this, who have been leading organizations for years, if not decades, and have been entrusted with mission critical responsibilities in human services, the arts and justice initiatives, and they and you know a lot. We want to provide the forum and opportunity to share best practices, common challenges, resources. Um, so another part of our intentional design is to embed peer learning into the program structure. So between the friendly faces you see on the screen and your peer cohort, we come to the assignments in the program. They're actually quite manageable, especially given the four week module um, spread over four months. There will be faculty assignments in between modules consisting of readings, reflections and assessments that will help you hit the ground running each week. Uh, we've worked really closely with faculty to help them hone down to the most relevant readings and topics. So hopefully um, we should experience very little of the reenactment of when you've received syllabuses or syllabi in the past where there are hundreds of pages of reading assigned and then you come to class and very little of it is actually discussed or, uh, or connected to the, to the presentation. So um, we try to minimize that as much as possible. You'll also have three key assignments. They are the 360 assessment, the leadership credo, and the organizational impact plan. And these together lead to our primary outcomes and benefits of the program. Let's talk a little bit about the three key assignments first. Uh, <clears throat> the organizational impact plan is basically your project-based learning experience. And it's one of our most beneficial peer learning structures. 
the, OIP, the OIP is what we usually shorten it to, is your opportunity to focus on something you want to do for your organization, your team, or your cause within the time frame of SLP. Uh, we're going to ask each participant to choose a short-term project that they will implement, and each participant will receive feedback on their plan through the course from a small team of cohort peers. So think of this as a personal case uh, around current, uh, current leadership management or challenge that you are facing um, that you would benefit from external objective analysis or coaching and, uh, and help with how to deal with that challenge. As part of your pre-program work, you'll be thinking of a topic before you arrive in January and we'll help you think through what would be an appropriate topic, which is one of the most crucial first steps. Um, you'll work on this for the duration of the program, and then when you arrive in January, you'll meet your cohort team or your project pods. By the second week, you'll begin to get feedback about your case uh, from your peers. And remember that your peers are like you. They're very senior, very experienced, and very generous individuals who are analyzing your case, providing resources, and connections in their networks that may be outside of, of your own purview. You'll, re, you'll revisit your pods and provide updates during week three. Um, this you know, speaks to account, a, a level of accountability for your progress that is present, as well as real application for the course content. Uh, you'll think about, here's what I've tried, here's what's worked, um, this is how this has evolved, here's my plan um, on how to move forward in the, in the next month. Uh, by the last module week, you're going to shift into future thinking mode and we'll discuss your successes and your challenges, what you've learned, and what you plan to do after the program in order to tie up your, um, your, o, your OIP. The OIP is a real-time applied project uh, where you have the benefit of ongoing support from very high-level peers. We build the pod times into the schedule, so there's no extra time that you have to coordinate or plan in order to meet with your teams. Uh, alumni have shared that the OIP experience is one of the most valuable experiences in integrating faculty content to their daily lives and work, and many still stay connected to their pods after the program ends. All right, let's talk about the 360 assessment. Some of you may be familiar with the 360 assessment. It's a common and well-known leadership survey um, whether you've done one before or not, the 360 essentially provides insight into your behavior as a leader. It collects data from those you work with, those you work for, and those who work for you. Um, the results are combined into a report that shows trends and themes. Uh, the reason it's called a 360 is because you get an all-around view of your leadership management style, your competencies, your effectiveness. Um, you'll work with an executive coach who will help you think about what are these results telling me? What are the trends and themes? And what are three to five things I can try to do differently or continue to do or reinforce with my various constituencies? Uh, the 360 is how we formalize the first step in the leadership development process, which is self-awareness. By getting clarity around your own competencies, your skills, and your areas for growth, the survey gives you an objective perspective of how you show up across various levels and with various groups. Um, it's a very useful tool for facilitating self-awareness and provides um, a clear uh, process for action steps as well. All right, leadership credo. Your final uh, assignment is the leadership credo. It's a powerful message that comes in the form of a speech. This speech makes a statement as to your vision, your hope, and who you are as a leader. It's meant to be delivered to a specific audience for a specific purpose. None of our main assignments are abstract or theoretical. Past participants have been able to use their credos at staff meetings. Um, they've set the tone for the coming year or uh, during a new initiative. Some have delivered them at annual benefits to draw in donors or re-engage existing donors. They used it to motivate um, individual to, to a, individuals to a specific cause or to support the organization's vision and mission. There have been a variety of uh, um, objectives for the credos from motivating teams to acknowledging the challenges um, ahead. So by the end of the credo experience, you'll have a useful leadership message that you can deliver with authority and confidence that'll maximize your intended impact. You'll get coaching and work with an expert on communication styles, which you know, is a really fun session. Um, the credo is the culminating exercise for 
the program and it allows you to take everything that you've learned from the senior leaders program and incorporate it into something of relevance and importance in your life in order to call people to action. So those are our three key assignments. Um, one other unwritten assignment that uh, is often touched upon during the program is how will you bring back specific content and the overall experience to your teams? Uh, a, com a commitment of great leaders is to ensure that the learning loop moves forward. So that, that is something that also comes out of the program is how we uh, share what we've learned and bring it back to our org organizations so that you're not the only one benefiting from the experience of the program. Okay, so now that you know the schedule, the content, um, the assignments, um, I want to acknowledge that we understand that you are all very busy working professionals. Um, in many cases, nonprofit organizations don't have the capacity or organizational slack to have additional individuals step in while you're away. So attending a program like this is a tough call for a lot of people, especially EDs of small non nonprofits. Um, so uh, be sure to consider, is this the right time for you? If you can't fully participate or commit, then you can't fully benefit from the program. You won't be able to gain the benefits of the, the networking experiences during breakfast and lunch, or to fully engage with the faculty readings and content because you'll, you'll be unable to complete assignments or you'll, you'll, you'll be preoccupied during the, um, the actual sessions. Um, if there are already more than two days of conflicts during the four week module, um, I would consider postponing your application for a different time. Something else to consider is that some senior leaders who can't make the time commitment, often uh, we see their application in the Developing Leaders Program, since that's a one, a one week program. If you fall into this category, please note that, um, please let us know that that's what's, what's happening when you apply via the, the Developing Leaders Program application platform. The content for DLP is not as extensive as SLP, but it's also a worthwhile program to consider if you can't make the four week SLP time commitment. Um, you'll still be able to complete the 360 assessment, as well as cover some key management and leadership topics. What you don't get in DLP that you do get in SLP is the time for the organizational impact plan and the leadership credo and the time to invest in a tight network of nonprofit leaders, as well as the additional coaching from an elite group of peers. Um, there are some other key benefits to SLP. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, the key question here is, Will investing four weeks of your time away from your, organ or your organizations and other obligations and completing the assignments all be worth it? So what we do is we bring the faculty, you, and your peers together. We give you some reflections, assignments, some projects, and we put you into this four month incubation um, period in order to advance your capacity as an integrated leader. Integrated leadership development is the goal of the program. Each aspect of the program in some way touches upon your capacity to lead yourself, which is what we call interpersonal leadership, lead others or interpersonal leadership, and lead the organization or systems, what we call strategic leadership. These three dimensions of leadership work in concert to help you be the most effective manager and leader possible for your organization as well as your cause. Building these aspects of your leadership capacities, your leadership capacities helps us to achieve our objective in creating this program. <clears throat> we invest in strengthening the management and business lens of nonprofit leaders in order to strengthen organizations and their ability to execute their missions. Uh, we then connect these leaders to each other, to, uh, to other nonprofit leaders with keen business acumen and passionate vision in order to help the sector advance and enhance the positive social impact for which it was created. So we understand that helping you run a, bit, a better business means that we as a larger community have a better chance to make a positive exponential, exponential impact in, in the world. The programs for social enterprise department and executive education um, at Columbia Business School is in the business of changing lives. And that may sound a little cliche, but we don't offer any silver bullets. You as graduates of our program, become our silver bullets. <clears throat> As past, um, here's a representation of some of the areas within the nonprofit sector that have come through our program. 
And as past participants of the program, you become part of a network of powerful nonprofit leaders who support strategic thinking and exchange best practices. Um, you're invited to events designed exclusively for your uh, for this net for this net network um, to continue our support of your work in the sector. And besides the nonprofit leadership network, participants who complete uh, the Senior Leaders Program also received the Certificate in Business Excellence, which expands your network to the entire Columbia Business School network. Uh, through this network, you'll receive a multitude of benefits, which you see on the screen. So if after all this, you feel this is the right program and the right fit given your role and your responsibilities, um, it's the right time in your career and you're ready to invest and commit um, in yourself and your development, your organization is giving you the time and space to support your full, your full participation during module weeks and in between modules to complete assignments, then you'll be ready to apply. So let's talk a little bit about the admissions process. Everything is online. Um, just go to our website and click that apply now button up at the top. Um, and you'll notice that if you haven't visited this page before, there are tabs at the bottom that provide more information about the program. And some helpful tips to think about as you're applying. One, please update your resume. We want to be able to have a good sense of your work history and your experience. Uh, we want to see where you've been working, um, what you've been working on for your causes, what, what you care about and uh, have a better sense of what your, tra your trajectory has been and is. Uh, the second tip I'll give you is to invest and spend a good deal of time on your personal statement. This is not like a regular graduate school program. There aren't any formal transcripts, letters of recommendation, or test scores. So we rely heavily on hearing your voice, your vision, your passion, your contribution, and your commitment to the sector and your understanding of the commitment to the SLP program and its design in your personal statement. Uh, what's your perspective on leadership, management, and the nonprofit sector? Um, give us a good sense of you as an individual and a leader and what you want to get out of the Senior Leaders Program. Most importantly, we'd love to know why now. Why at this juncture in your career would you benefit from a program like ours and what would you bring to it? What do you hope to learn what do you, uh, what are you seeking? What do you want to be, or wh why do you want to be a student again and come back into the learning environment? Uh, what aspects of our program are most intriguing and, and, and why? That's 250 words on one page. Um, and if you cover that, you'll be in good shape with your personal statement. Finally, have your resume, personal statement, and organization's 990 forms ready for submission. Um, which uh, Karen is going to help explain why we are asking for your organization's 990 form. All right, let's discuss financial assistance. Um, the first part of, um, as part of our commitment to the nonprofit sector, the programs and social enterprise offers three types of financial assistance. Though tuition assistance is not guaranteed, we do our best to provide financial support whenever possible. The first being tuition assistance. This is a sliding scale based on the operating budget of your organization. To be eligible, the organization's yearly budget, operating budget must be under 5 million and you will need to submit your organization's 990 form when you apply. The maximum, the maximum discount is 50% off the program price. The second would be a discount. Alums of Columbia Business School and past participants may refer an applicant for a 25% discount. If this is the case, please ask them to send an email to Lon or myself. And the last is scholarships. If your organization is a grantee of one of our partnering foundations, the Clark, Pinkerton, Robin Hood, and Catalog for Giving, you could be eligible for a scholarship of 75 to 80% off your tuition amount. Note that this decision is left up to the foundation and not our department, but to be eligible, you must be in the applicant pool in order to be considered, so please apply. Okay, application timeline. Here are some key dates. Um, the application deadline is set for Friday, September 20th. 
The admissions decisions and tuition aid scholarship notification will be sent out on Monday, October 21st. The acceptance email will not only contain whether or not you've been accepted, but will also let you know if you have received scholarship and for how much. If you do not receive a scholarship, you could be eligible for a discount or tuition assistance, and we can discuss those options at that time. The enrollment confirmation is due on Monday, October 28th. In your acceptance email, you will, it will contain a link to a confirmation page. You will have a week after receiving your acceptance email to accept or deny your participation into the program. Once you have confirmed your acceptance through the link, you will be sent an invoice of your balance and how to submit payment. That payment is due on December 6. A note to you that the school can work with you in regards to payment installations if that is needed. So please reach out to us. And the orientation and pre-program work assignments will be sent out through email November to December before the program commences in January. And now it's time for any questions. That concludes our presentation. Please use the Q&A field to submit your questions. <coughs> Suzanne is asking, does the program address topics of relevance to particular nonprofit sectors or is the training more general in nature? That's a good question. Um, so the, the training I would say is more general in nature. <clears throat> You'll notice that some business school concepts uh, really apply to, to any business. Um, it's about running organizations. It's about managing teams. Um, it's about um, how to create a, uh, a winning strategy um, and how to execute and imp imp implement those strategies. So that can be applied to any sector, not just, um, not just non nonprofit. We do have, as nonprofits, um, a different bottom line. Uh, it's not so much about how much money we earn, but how much impact we make. So, uh, so we do bring that lens into the conversation, and, um, and a great deal of, of that lens is also brought in by your peers. Thank you for that question, Suzanne. Um, another question came in uh, from Lisa. What is the usual size of the cohort? Hmm. Uh, so we usually admit between 35 and 45 people. Um, anything below or above that usually um, isn't as beneficial in terms of group dynamics. So, uh, so that's the number that we usually work with. Thanks, Lisa. And one more question uh, from Jeff. How soon will I get notified after I submit my application? Um, you should, uh, well, it'll be a month. We have a little bit, we have a time during our enrollment to actually go through the applications and the scholarship. So this takes a little bit of time, but um, you will be notified within a month after um, your uh, completing your application. Yeah, I, I would say that if you don't, um, you should wait until after October 21st. Yes. And um, another question, Am I able to redo my original application submission, which is needed after listening to this call? <laughs> um, yes, absolutely. Uh, just feel free to reach out to um, Lana or myself, and we can help you through that process. Not in. Um, and last question. Um, is there a tuition payment plan if you don't get sponsorship? Absolutely. Um, we realize that, you know, that that is a hefty um, bill for some organizations and the school will definitely work with you. So feel free to reach out to myself and we can um, and we can work with our financial aid to to get this process. Great. All right. Thank you for those questions. Um, so some key next steps is to email us to let us know that you intend to apply. Um, that's always helpful. And if you have any specific unanswered questions that we didn't cover in the information session, by all means, please also con uh, contact us with that. Uh, complete the online application by September 20th. And contact us if you don't hear from us by midnight on Tuesday, October 22nd. Um, we should be sending out all notifications by that time. Thank you so much for your time today and for joining us. Um, thank you for your work in the nonprofit sector. We uh, truly appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please contact us via the email above.
Uh, we really look forward to hearing from you and we wish you the very best in your current and future endeavors. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.